Hi everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Matchbox restoration series. In this episode I'll be restoring the 26B Foden cement mixer that I bought online together with some other Lesney models. The 26B model was introduced in 1961, replacing the smaller 26A ERF mixer. The first versions had a grey barrel, but they soon changed the color to orange like you see on this model. It does have the silver trim applied to the grill and the front bumper, which they only apply to the earlier models. The casting itself is in a good state, so that makes it perfect for a restoration. For starters, we'll unload the barrel of its contents. It seems to have some metal swarf inside. First, I'll remove the rivet that holds the barrel in place. It has roughly the same size as the other rivets found on this model, so I'll use my drill to drill out the rivet. I do this very gently and with small steps at a time to avoid drilling through the plastic of the barrel. After a couple of tries, the barrel comes off easily. The other rivet comes off by using the same drill bit. I have to be very careful with this one, because there is almost no rivet post behind the rivet. I want to use the small post to clip the base back on once the model is painted. When the body is separated from the base, I drill a 1.5mm hole in the rivet post of the barrel. A couple of my subscribers suggested using some oil on the rivet post while doing this. This, together with drilling in small steps at a time, avoids breaking the drill bit. The axles come off by removing the small lip that holds the wheel in place. While tilting the model, I use my Dremel tool to remove the axles. To match the color of the original model, I'm mixing the new color while the paint is still on the model. I start off by mixing some yellow Tamiya X8 with a tiny bit of red Tamiya X7 acrylic paint. This gives me a lighter orange than the original one. By adding some red paint, it takes me another two tries to get the color right. Now that the paint color is mixed, it's time to remove the paint with some paint stripper. After looking for a drill press in the ads in my local hardware store, I used the paper to protect my workbench. Check out all those discounts. But back to the paint stripping. While the paint stripper is working, I notice that it probably needs an extra round of applying paint stripper. After that I brush the paint off with a toothbrush. It took me another round of applying paint stripper to remove all the leftover paint. Since this is a casting again with some fine details, I remove the paint that is left in the small corners of the model with some tweezers. That's my cat. Some subscribers told me to use a safety pin or some dental tool set for this, which I'll probably try in a future restoration. To clean up the look of the casting, I experimented with a fiberglass pen to remove the corroded parts without ruining any details in the process. One of the axles is slightly bent, but overall in pretty good condition. That's why I try to straighten it with some pliers.
After a couple of tries, it's straight again. I'm using some emery paper wrapped around the axles to remove the rusty parts and make them shine again. The same goes for the tip of the axle. Time to put the primer onto the model. I'm using the light grey Tamiya surface primer for this model. A couple of thick coats retains details such as the front grille. This will pay off later in the restoration process. The base gets the same primer treatment. I clean the barrel with some hot soapy water and a toothbrush. There is a small crack in the barrel, but I'm not sure how to repair it without affecting the look of it. If you have any advice on this, please let me know in the comments. After the barrel is cleaned, I'm using some pledge polish on a paper towel to make the barrel nice and shiny. The primer coat has dried, time for some paint. I'm using my basic airbrush kit to apply several coats of paint. I'm using an LED light source to lighten my paint area, so I can get a better view on how well the paint is applied onto the model. At first the paint doesn't come out as it should. A quick rinse with thinner on a cotton bud on the airbrush nozzle area removes the excess paint and fixes the issue. The base with all its tiny corners and curves is a bit harder to paint evenly, but with some patience and light coats of paint it works out pretty good. Once the paint is dry, I can continue by applying the trim details. I'm using a very fine brush together with the Tamiya X11 Chrome Silver Acrylic Paint. I start by painting the bumper small parts at a time with small amounts of paint. Next up is the front grille, which needed a lot of attention due to the small text in the middle. I kept on filling the holes in the text with paint, even when I was using as little paint as I could. I finished the trim details by painting the headlights with a slightly bigger brush. The base has a lip which fits into the bumper, so I give it the same color as well. With the trim details applied, it's time to add a clear coat to both the base and the body. The extra LED light comes in handy here as well. Although I know I should have tapped the rivet post before painting the model, I still needed to do this after painting it. I gently tread the rivet post to make sure it's enough thread to fit the screw that will hold the barrel. Again, I'm using a bit of oil to smoothen the threading process. As I'm putting the barrel back on, I notice there is a lot of play by moving the barrel back and forth. I remove the barrel and put some washers in place to fix this.
It's time to put the axles back on with what appears to be a frightening method for some people. But rest assured, the tips of the axles always protrude the mud guards, so the chance of chipping the paint job is rather small. The only thing left to do is putting the body and base back together. Because I took extra care on drilling into the small rivet post in the beginning, I can now just snap the rivet post back into the hole in the body to secure the base. And that's it. This Foden cement mixer is ready to hit the road again. I'm pretty happy with how the trim details turned out, as these were really hard to get right. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Also if you'd like to support me and want to vote in some of the models I will be restoring later on, check out my Patreon page in the description below. Thank you for watching.